Hey guys, Merry Christmas. I'm Lisa. Hey, I'm Charlie. And this is our Georgia Suburban Homestead on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year when it gets here. Yeah, we'll probably do another video Maybe. for New Year. Now, we don't celebrate Christmas. It's not a part of our faith, but we do celebrate gift giving. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably a function of habit, having grown up in this culture, but we do give people we love uh, small presents and usually something that's hand handmade except when it comes to us we tend to give each other books books <laughs> tools books books <laughs> tools Tool. so um this year I gave Charlie a couple of tools for the wood shop that you know we've been making cutting boards and she's cutting boards and bottle tops and and uh, wood things to uh, to sell at uh, markets that uh, we've decided to start doing in our retirement years. Um, and we've really gotten into it working together, haven't we, Daddy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're having a good time. So So we've already been using the tools. <laughs> okay, he's already, he got to use the tools already for the last week or so. Um, <laughs> but in, in the spirit of giving and uh, the spirit of the holidays, we thought that we would share with you what we gave to each other. So, Charlie got a router, brand new router, does fancy schmancy things like groove, juice grooves and cutting boards and <laughs> what else can you do with that router? Well, whatever you do for a router, you should be able to do edges, rounded edges, flat edges, keyholes and such what. Uh, it's a plunge router, but it also comes with a fixed base. You can change the bases out. And I'd show it to you, except, as I say, we've been using it. It's set it's, up in the shop. It's mounted to the router table at the moment. Yeah, so you can't really see it. Well, it's did, pretty dirty. It's, it's pretty <laughs> dirty, full of sawdust. Um, <laughs> my, my, my shop is full of sawdust. <laughs> oh, right. You're chock full. But it goes into the compost pile. <clears throat> so, um... I also bought him a, uh, a routing guider, or what is it called, a jig, and for the cutting uh, boards. For the for the cutting boards, but and it hasn't it's, shown up yet. It's supposed to. <laughs> it's supposed to make his life easier, and I ordered it at the end of November, and was told it would be here within four days. <laughs> and then I got notification: Oops, we oversold it. It'll be the end of January before he gets it. So that was part of Christmas. So Charlie. Uh, so I have a second Christmas. I um I have been struggling most of my life to make decent bread, and Charlie will tell you, the breads that I've made over the years you could use for self defense. Um, <laughs> Some of them, <laughs> you know, or, or to stop the door open, or bricks in a wall. I'm think, not much of a baker. Fruit cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um you know he built that tan door for me th this year, and uh, I'm like okay now I have to learn how to make naan and specifically Afghan naan. And here's a shout out to Miriam over at Afghan Cooks. Go check out her channel, Afghan Cooks. I followed her directions for naan and now I'm a naan baker. <laughs> so, um... No, 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 no. <laughs> So Charlie decides, well, he Let's buy me a book on how to bake. And since he likes to deep dive on things, this is, it takes you on a deep dive on how to treat the yeast and the flour and, and the techniques. It's by Paul Hollywood. Hollywood. So how to bake. And it's really gets into the chemistry of working with yeast and flour and, and how to control it. <clears throat> we'll see how much I'll learn from it. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm going to do, to I'm going to do a gift and then Charlie's going to show you a gift. So what yeah. do you... Hmm? Got to learn the, to uh, take instructions from a book and go through the whole process. And maybe we'll do a video on some of that. Oh, you know we will. <laughs> so, I got him another tool. And he's been playing with it today. It's a contour guide. I was running out of thought there for a minute. You can... Show him closer. You, you can... Uh, it's got a lot of little pieces that can go up and down. Oops, this way. So you can make a contour. It looks a little naughty. Um, 
you know, you, you push it up against something and the next thing you know, you got a contour you can trace out. See? There we go. <laughs> my face. <laughs> if I wanted to do something about my face. You never know. Well, you could put that, like, if you're doing a silhouette on something, on some wood, and burn it into the wood. Yeah. That's a thought. Yep. Yeah. Makes me wonder. I don't have a very well-defined face. What do you think? Anyway, it actually comes with two of these. So if you got something long, you got it's long you got to do. Floors, <laughs> corners and floors. And yep. And, uh... Maybe I'll use it for uh, when I'm turning wood to, you know, reproduce the shape. One of the hardest things in turning wood is to reproduce a, a shape. So you're turning legs multiple. for multiple legs for a table. And you, <laughs> you want to make sure you get <laughs> the, the wide parts and the thin parts and all that at the same spot, which can be a little difficult. So we're going to try it out on more than just my face. And it came with two of them, actually. If I can get this one out. A shorter one! I there think we you go. can use that on the lathe. Yeah, I think small I can things use... On the yeah, on small things on the lathe. You know, if you're trying to, to turn a ball, getting a nice circular ball can be hard. But let's say I, I get one of uh, Bamsey's Play Toy Balls. And, uh, make a contour of it, then I can take it to the lathe and try to reproduce that contour. How's that, folks? Yep. Yep. You just gotta be careful with me. <laughs> this has made him happier than some things have in a long time, and playing with it today. Well, you know. Alright, your turn. My turn. Did we mention we like books? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about the time we gave each other the same book. Oh, a couple of Christmases ago when I was studying for my certification in herbal medicine, I was learning about fire cider and um, getting to know the big names in herbal medicine. And one of them is Rosemary Gladstar. And fire cider is a term that she coined for a medicinal uh, vinegar-based cider that really does keep you healthy. It's usually consider a little fiery because you put horseradish in it? No, actually it's called fire cider because it builds your body temperature, which no. helps you okay. fight germs. But I always thought it was because it had horseradish in yeah, it. Yeah, well the horseradish is one of those warming herbs, and we, we say warming. Okay. Horseradish, I makes you hot. Early. Yeah, it makes you sweat. <laughs> but anyway. So Charlie had such a kick helping me make the fire cider. <laughs> and we were prone to bronchitis at this time of year. And since we've been making fire cider, we haven't had bronchitis. So that gives you a hint on how good it is. Uh, anyway, so he, he got so into making it that I decided to buy uh, a book for him that was written by Rosemary Glad Gladstar. It's called 101 Fire Cider Recipes or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so we're sitting there Christmas morning and we hand each other gifts, <laughs> obviously books, and we'll pick them up and say, it's, it's a, a book! book. <laughs> <laughs> and we unwrap them simultaneously, and what was it? We gave each other the, the same, same book. <laughs> fire cider. Was <laughs> a Gladstone book on fire cider. But it turned out okay because something happened to one of them. It's around here somewhere. Well, we still have two books somewhere, but... Hmm. One that we can lay our hand on. Um, I think the <laughs> other one might be on the shelf over there, honey. Somewhere. But um, then Mr. Smarty over here decides to double the horseradish in his next batch of fire cider, and he it's made good. like a gallon of it. Hey, I like it. Oh my God, I can't, I can't tolerate it. I wish you would just <laughs> go back and making. He's a fire cider maker now. Go back and follow a recipe for, for once. And we're about to harvest well, the horseradish for the year. So. That's the whole thing about fire cider is that you can make it the way you want it. Yeah, depending but depending on what you got. You've got muted taste buds. Well, okay. He does. He's got muted taste buds, and that's how I got into cooking Indian foods because he has a very, very dull sense of taste. I have no sense of smell almost. 
Yeah, so his taste buds are, are like not very good. So yeah. everything has to be highly textured and highly uh, spiced for him to taste anything. So if he says the fire cider is just it's mild and it's good, then I'm on the floor gasping for air. But she likes hot stuff, so, you know, <laughs> I can't take her level of heat. He doubled the horseradish. I can't tolerate it. And even, even with it the way it is, I have to add... Like, what do you take? A, a, an ounce at a time? Well, a two. tablespoon or two and some apple cider. Apple, apple cider or apple juice is the only way I can get it down, but it does improve my health. We've digressed. Okay. <laughs> so he gave me the, the how-to bread book or the science of bread book that I just showed you um, about a week ago. And then today he hands me this book. Indian. Already you know that I cook a lot of Indian food, right? So Indian Punjabi, um, and I'm delving into Afghanistan, which is like a marriage of the Middle East and India. Um, <clears throat> this is called the Big Book of Indian Breads. <laughs> and not only is it giving me recipes for these wonderful flat breads to cook in the new tandoor that he built for me, but of things that you can put on them. Like chutneys, which is like uh, pickles, meat, jam type recipes. But I look really, really look forward to trying this out. This out. Um, I started to do a shout out to, uh, I think I already did, a Miriam over at Afghan Cooks has taught me how to uh, to do successful non, Afghan non. So Miriam, I'm going to hashtag you on this. Are you familiar with this book? <laughs> it's good. And if you have a cookbook coming out, I think you did, please uh, say something in the comments below and, and uh, y'all check her out. Anyway, so I'll be reading this today with my herbal tea. Yep. And since this seems to be the year of the bread, and I'm hopefully this year I'm going to be building the pizza oven. So the flat breads that those things were... Hopefully, we'll be easy to cook in the pizza oven. But. And we'll uh, be doing some Azerbaijani breads, too. Yeah. There's a. Uh, it's a country living vlog or something like that. That lady from Afghanistan does cooking. She does new t no talking. But I'm going to make some of her breads. And I'll shout out to her, too, when, when I do that. But anyway. I okay. Well, as I said, since this was going to be the year of the bread, and Lisa's. Uh, and Doc. Endocrinologist and endocrinologist. There we go. Endocrinologist, my diabetes doctor. Wants her to eat whole grain breads. I bought myself this book. Uh, let's see if you can read that. Whole grain breads. <laughs> so I'm going to try to go in there and cook Lisa some whole grain breads of various types. It's going to be battle of the kitchen, you know, who yeah. gets, yeah, but we'll work together. We like cooking together. Um, interesting thing about this book is that the, Peter like the, Reinhardt. the first three chapters are about um, how to make bread as well. Now, this is more about how to make whole grain breads and... Is it different from the other breads? Well, he has a different technique. He actually starts his dough at before he goes to bed. You know, a lot of the breads do. There's a two-day process. Yeah. yeah, it's like a two-day process. Um, and I'm not sure. I haven't got to the third chapter yet. I'm on, still on the second chapter. But in the third chapter, he starts talking about how that helps bring out the nutrients and all in the whole grains and make sure and helps to make sure that the bread doesn't just fall apart because whole grain breads tend to have a little less gluten in them so they don't they don't hold together as well um, so like I say um, I gotta make it through the third chapter and I don't think the recipes start to like the fifth chapter I can't remember what's in the fourth one but uh, he reads fast. Well, I've been, one of my New Year's resolutions is to get through a bunch of the books that we have bought that have been sitting on the shelf with me reading like the first two chapters before 
it gets put down and I go to the next book. Yeah, he gets distracted by shiny things. Shiny things being books. And new shiny books. New shiny books. <laughs> we got to love them. Um, you know, but the, the thing that gets me <laughs> is he married a communicator. I've got advanced degrees in communications, worked as a journalist for 30 years, not only in print journalism, but broadcast, and I made documentaries. So what does he buy recently? A book on how to write dialogue. Well, I didn't know she had things on... Of course, that's part of what I do. And I'm like, you, why, you, why you married a successful award-winning journalist? You didn't do fiction writing. Well, fiction is another thing, but it, it the same skills in developing... Yeah, I, anyway, I I'm like, why didn't you just ask me, and I can teach you how to do this in effective methods, and, and I'm like... Well, we're, I'll read the books, and then I'll ask her questions as I read the book, because that was another shiny thing. That's another shiny thing. <laughs> but, you know, they say that if a person reads books, they tend to read at least six books a year, but they might buy 18 of them. <laughs> People don't That's read. just they a never fraction of what we do. And we can't go to a library, right? We have to possess them. They have to be ours. Okay. Well, I don't cover books that I like in libraries. I mean, it's fine if you want fiction and, and some of the popular stuff, but are you going to get out any books on phytochemistry? Not in the local library. Yeah, this is a man who works quantum physics projects to relax. <laughs> Well, not really. I'm trying to get into quantum physics. That's one of my books that uh, I'm working on at the moment. Anyway, so you know that we're coming up with crafts ideas and things that people may enjoy in our little crafts booth at the markets. And I've discovered since we started doing the river table cutting boards that I enjoy working with resin. So uh, I've gotten a bunch of resin molds. I'm going to be making jewelry and keychains and things that you can do with resin. Um, and Charlie decided he would incorporate his skills on the turning lathe with my newfound obsession with resin. And he turned... We're doing bottle stoppers, okay? And this is a bottle stopper. I'm going to come closer. Can you see that? So, so. Isn't that neat? It's got resin it's, at the top. It's resin at the top and then it's got wood. I think that's just a piece of rough cork mm, that they have put in. It started out square or rectangular, yeah. okay? Um, and it's a very light pigmented resin over a natural wood base. And I, I just think that's so cool. And he did that for me, and I'll be doing herbal vinegars in a bottle and putting that on the kitchen counter to uh, to look at. Um, but it's really sparked interest with interest with me going to make some sort of herbal vinegar. Uh, but also... <laughs> fire and, cider. And fire cider. <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll put this on the fire cider so we know, oh my God, that's the fire cider. Yeah. But... Um, I, I'll pour these for him, and he can turn them. <laughs> if I can find the wood to put in the mold. Oh, we'll find it. And then, because we love nature, he turned a uh, acorn. acorn. And that's two kinds of wood. That's curly maple, and that's wenge. And that's a bottle stopper. And I don't know about you, but I think that's a really neat gift. We're going to have to have a lot of more bottles. <laughs> well, we, we, bottles we've got. <laughs> bottles we've got. Yeah, Bed Bath & Beyond went out of business, and I raided their, their vinegar bottle stash. and bought a bunch of them, uh, thinking people, when they, they bought a bottle stopper, would want a bottle to do their vinegars and oils in. And no one bought them for about six or seven festivals we went to. Yes. And then we didn't bring <laughs> the, the bottles. We didn't bring them. <laughs> then people asked for them, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I packed I packed that box of bottles up. I don't know how many mm. times, and it's a pain in the whatever because it's um, wide. Mm. You know. So and that that that's really it because the camera's about to run out of juice. So we're gonna say. We'll see Bye -bye. you next time. Subscribe.
thumbs up. Bye. Bring Merry Christmas. All that, all that stuff. stuff. <laughs> Bye.